I had very high expectations, and I did not want to make a product, again, that represented a compromise. And so there were some tough moments in the beginning, and we postponed it, and I think in hindsight, we're for sure glad we did. A big element of how we work is, hey, what if? It's the power of exploring, and one idea leads to the next idea. I mean, we used to make step-in bindings here, but you know we haven't sold them in a decade. It was never something that really stuck. There were a lot of flaws, a lot of things that people didn't like. We always had conversations. Didn't just say, man, if we did it over, it'd be done so different. When you start rallying people in Burton around that concept, you start to get a level of engagement and excitement that just is like, all right, how are we doing this? So we definitely started this project a lot differently than any other project. Everything else was taken away from us and we were allowed the ability to really, really focus on this one very difficult study project. This isn't the first attempt at a mechanical strapless interface. And the bigness of the past with the industry and everybody that has done a version of this is they really didn't give performance enough attention. We really challenged them to look at it not from, okay, what should the product look like, but what is the need that we're addressing? We need comfort, we need convenience, and we need performance. I made a little halo out of just scrap aluminum pieces I had around my shop where we were able to mount three or four GoPros at a time right onto the board screwed into the channel. And we watched how the foot rolls in a step-in binding, in a strap binding, trying to be proactive with the research and the understanding and the empathy of how does a snowboarder use a binding. I mean, it was pretty clear. You could see an old system on camera. You see the guy take a turn and nothing happens. And then you see our traditional strap binding and he takes a turn and it totally moves and responds with him. So that was a big catalyst for setting up like the critical requirements for an engineering standpoint. At one point, we even tried screwing a boot down into a snowboard, like no binding whatsoever. It was physically bolted on there. And uh, Chris Cunningham went and wrote it. Kind of had to have a talk with a couple of people to be like, hey, you know, if you see us doing something that's really weird, just don't look. <laughs> we could not have done this project without rapid prototyping and specifically without our selective laser centering capabilities. Being able to have an idea, put it together in CAD, grow it, play with it the next day, maybe put it on snow, maybe not, and do that over and over and over again allows us to try so many different things and learn so much that we really couldn't do 10, 15 years ago. We changed mechanical elements in this binding several times through the whole process. We had a four-point connection, we had a three-point connection, we had toe connections, we had ankle connections, we had heel connections. The two systems that sort of bubbled to the top were the four points of contact and then the three-point system. Those two systems were being developed in parallel. The first three-point system we had on snow was written out at Mount Hood and they came back from that trip and they were like, you guys, you know what, this road really great taking a cut-off part of an ankle strap ratchet tongue and bolting it to the back of a boot and then trying to put the whole mechanism from a buckle into a high back was a really brilliant part of the process. That trip was definitely a turning point that we kind of shifted our focus to that at that time. So this prototype right here is completely, with the exception of the foam, out of the laser sintering machine here that I hand painted and we assembled the whole thing. It's fully functional, ridden on snow. It allowed people for the first time in marketing and sales and other parts of the company to see what the final system was going to look like. We always do a ton of testing, but this was like so far above and beyond anything else we've ever done. An issue will come up on snow that we've never seen before because this is a new product. And so we'll have to go back and be like, okay, well, how can we replicate that indoors? We were having issues with snowpack getting into the system, and we were in a meeting saying, okay, well, how are we going to solve this? And someone said, well, we could build a snow gun and, and see how much snow we can shoot at it and have it still work. And I was like, that's a crazy idea, but then we kind of figured out how to do it. I realized that we needed a test where we could cycle the binding in and out, in and out, over and over and over again. So that allowed us to really see where things were wearing. That helped us to really develop what the final shape of the cleats and the clips were going to be. Throughout a lot of this validation, you're doing everything you can to make it fail, and when it doesn't, you're like, cool, we're good. 
That's one of the toughest things about product development is you fail a ton. You have to be ready to fail a ton. And we failed a ton in, in this project, but we just kept going and every failure was just more we learned to go and do the next thing. Throughout the course of this entire project, that's probably my favorite thing, is watching somebody experience it for the first time. I like this. It's like comfortable. It feels like an actual, like I have an actual strap on, but I don't. Thinking about the first time we showed it to Donna. She knew we were working on it, but she had never touched and seen and played around with it. And I actually have video footage of her stepping on for the first time, and she just lifts her head up and is like, you listen to that noise, and now... Wow, that was easy. And now the events that we did to launch Step On were some of the coolest, most progressive events I've seen. Probably seen Instagrams or people jumping into the system. I'm not recommending that, <laughs> unless you're a professional. Wow. Good morning, everyone. Special day. Burton has been working on new technology for years. It's an exclusive event right now. We're going in to learn more about Step On. We had one retail account come in, like three separate times, one of the guys was like, well, and then, and, oh, and if, oh, you guys nailed it, man. This is pretty good. <laughs> what are you thinking so far? Uh, it works. I don't think about it at all. <laughs> I just ride. There it is. After lunch, not one person was like, hey, I, you know, I need to get back on my regular bindings. Thanks so much, but I need to go back. Everybody just couldn't wait to get out and go ride these things some more. The bindings are really good. You get a really good like heel to toe feels. It's a revolution. I mean, it's so fast to get in and out again. I'm more than hyped on it. Yeah. When all of a sudden you're seeing people doing one footers and landing them and going back in and just the creativity that people immediately bring to a, a new toy, if you will. It was incredibly gratifying after four years of work to see that we had created something that people were really having fun on. There was so much validation around it. We just wanted to use the U.S. Open as a way to truly unveil it to the public. I had no idea what like we were walking into with this. It was like, oh yeah, it's just a demo. People come by, they want to try it. We had people at the tent just frothing. We had a family from the Midwest. We had three generations, like grandma, mom, and daughter, all showed up with like, I went to my local shop. I heard about Step On. They told me I have to demo it here. Like, you got to get me on this. It was like, really? And so we took him up the next day, and like the grandma was 70 plus years old, and she's ripping on Step On, like watching her tumble, get up, she's cheering, like a video of her, like, this is the greatest system I've ever ridden. This is so cool! For the first time in our history, I think we really held back on a development and waited until it was super ready. We knew that there was going to be a lot of eyes on it, so it really had to be perfect. I have no desire to go back to straps, you know. Strap bindings are great. We make a lot of great strap bindings. If that's your jam, that's your jam, but you have to do a lot. A lot of riders have to sit on the ground. They're constantly kind of tightening. It's a lot of bending over, and I don't think you realize how much you do that until you suddenly don't have to do that. I think that the introduction of step on technology will, will change the sport. And I think it'll facilitate more riders and women and kids. And I think the barriers of entry to the sport will be lowered. The future of Step On, the possibilities are really endless. There definitely will be some stuff that we do to make it available for youth in the future. And the team riders are really starting to gravitate toward it too, which is something we never really expected. Nice. This has been one of the greatest projects I've ever had the good fortune to work on and it's really pretty gratifying. I look forward to seeing a lot of people having fun with this.